Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Can you see my face and hear my voice? If you just, if you can, just write yes in the in the chat in the corner there. Good. Seems to be most people. Great. Okay, so I'll make a start. It's five past one now. Um, if you come, end up coming to UCL, one thing you'll realise is the the UCL hour starts at five past one and ends at well starts at five past the hour and ends at five to the hour. So it's actually a 50 minute hour. So that's good. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, thanks for coming. This is a virtual open day and we're talking about the UCL um, MSc in Geospatial Sciences. Um, hopefully some of you have already applied or are thinking about applying for it and we'll give you an overview to see whether it's the right course for you. The way that these open days work is that we'll talk for about 15 to 20 minutes, um, give a broad overview of the course and then um, we'll close the, the video and we'll open the chat room and we've got a few people here with us and hopefully between us we can um, answer all the questions you might have about the course. Okay, so hopefully that sounds good. So I'm going to head straight in there. And let's see. There we are. Okay, so who's here today? My name is Dr. James Howarth. I am a lecturer here um, in the Department of Civil Environmental and Geomatic Engineering. I'm also the lead of the GIS pathway. So there's um, three routes through the MSc Geospatial Sciences, um, the, the standard route, the G GIS computing route, and the building information modeling route. Um, joining us shortly will be Dr. Jan Berm. He is the head of the BIM pathway, the building information modeling pathway. We also have um, Tony Fawcett down the end here. Um, Tony is the communications and marketing manager in the department. And sitting next to him is Carlos Reed Vergara, who is a current student on our MSc in GIS. So um, if you have any questions about the um, student experience here in London, then um, Carlos will be able to answer those uh, after the session. Um, I should note now that um, Carlos will be using my keyboard to uh, type as well. So if he answers questions, they'll come up as James. But if necessary, he'll clarify that it's, it's him talking there. So hopefully that'll be okay. Right, so this is a brief outline of the talk. So I'm going to talk about why you might want to study at UCL. Um, I'm going to talk about what geospatial science is. Um, some of you may be very familiar with the subject. Some of you may be converting from other backgrounds. So I'll just give a brief overview of what that is. Um, I'll then talk about the program. So the way the program is structured and the, the different pathways that you can choose to take through the program. Um, and then I'll talk about the various things that you will be doing if you study here. Um, then after that, we'll, we'll hand over to you guys and you can ask whatever questions you might have. Okay, so why study at UCL? Um, you, you have a, a broad range of places where you could possibly study. Why study at UCL? So um, first of all, UCL is a top research university. Um, it's consistently ranked highly in the QS World Rankings. Um, the most recent one, it was seventh. Um, we have a, a great track record in research. Um, we have a, a strong group in GIS and in building information modeling. Um, we're located in central London. So um, if any of you have been, not been to London before, you can have a look at this uh, Visit London uh, tourist attraction map down here. Um, I've just put a little arrow there to UCL. We're located right in the middle of, um, of all of the main tourist attractions in, um, in London. Um, just down the road from the British Museum, which is one of the um, the uh, top museums in the in the country. Um, the thing to note about that is that all of our national museums are free, so you could even pop in there to study at lunchtime if you if you um, wanted a nice place to work. Um, recently, you may have seen this. London was ranked the top city in the world for studying, um, and our students tend to to like studying here. There's plenty of places to go and and eat and go out and experience the culture. Um, most places where, where you might be coming from, you can probably get that kind of food here. Um, it's very, very good for, um, for, for international food and um, there's, there's um, uh, great pockets of London where you can experience different cultures from around the world. Um, we also get, at the moment, we're enjoying some very, very nice summery weather. Um, we also get the full range of weather. So um, that picture at the bottom corner there, of, um, that's a Regent's Park, which is about a 10 minute walk. Um, and a lake frozen over, which was um, maybe in February this year. Yeah. So you, you'll experience everything here. It's a great place to study. Um, and 
a lot of our students who study here go on to stay here and do PhDs and then um, end up actually working in the department, which is, which is what I did. I'll talk a bit about that later. OK, so what is geospatial science? So you're all applying for a geospatial science degree of some kind, whether it's the, the building information modeling pathway or the GIS pathway. So what do we mean when we talk about geospatial science? So broadly speaking, it's the science of working with geospatial data. So data related to locations on the Earth, also at moments in time um, increasingly. Um, and we cover the whole work stream from geospatial data acquisition all the way through to processing to analysis. So in terms of the acquisition part, we're talking about the different modes of collecting geospatial data. So we're talking about satellite systems, um, airborne systems, so um, uh, sensors mounted on airplanes, um, terrestrial systems, and also global nav navigation satellite systems. Um, we're, we also talk about the processing of these data, so how we represent these data using computers, so vector and raster geometries, um, how we store these data in databases, so different types of databases from um, your kind of standard relational databases up to uh, NoSQL databases, which are the, the kind of modern trends. And we also talk about how you verify the quality of spatial data um, and how you ensure that they um, meet certain standards and that you collect metadata. So this is data about data that ensures that other people are able to understand the data that we're generating. And this is very important. Um, if you've ever worked in, for example, um, government, then you probably understand that metadata is very important. And finally, um, we talk about analysis of spatial data. So we're talking about the, the characteristics of data, spatial data that make them special and require um, specific techniques. So looking at correlation and dependence in data, how we analyze data, how we take a spatial data set, decide what analysis methods we need to use, and then apply those methods to that data. Um, and in the second part of term, if you're on the GIS course in particular, you'll be looking at how we can do mining of large geospatial data sets, um, generate analytics on those data sets, and create um, visualizations, not just mapping, but dashboards and things like that. Um, and the key thing that sets our degree apart from others is that we cover this whole work stream. So um, all the way from acquiring the data, all the way through to analyzing the data, and producing products that you would give to a, a customer, for example. OK, so just to give a quick overview of the course, um, our aims are to train you in the theory, tools, and techniques of geospatial science. Very broad aim. Um, and the, the point of this is that we want you to be equipped for a professional or research career in geospatial sciences. Um, many of our students go on to stay in academia to do PhDs um, and to engage in scientific research. But we also understand that it's important to be relevant to industry and to teach the techniques and the software and the tools that industry requires. Um, and we're constantly uh, updating what we teach to make sure that it's relevant to, to the, um, the current standards in the industry. Um, if you choose to do one of the routes, so either GIS and computing or building information modeling and from the year after next hydrographic surveying, then we provide more in-depth training in those disciplines. The modes of delivery, um, we have a combination of lectures, um, quite a lot of computer labs, so we, we've got a lot of hands-on practical work. Um, we also run seminars um, with industry speakers, which I'll talk about a bit later, and we have an element of field work in some of the courses. In terms of assessment, so you'll have a lot of group work, um, group coursework, where you work in small teams to deliver a project. Um, You'll deliver presentations to talk about your work, um, you'll produce posters, and you'll also have the odd written examination, um, which you will get in every university degree. Um, you'll get to use a variety of software while you're here. Um, and that we, we teach proprietary software because we understand that in industry, um, they're very, still very much the benchmark. So if you're familiar with GIS already, You'll know that ArcGIS is the, the, the kind of um, the mainstream software that's still used in the majority of, um, of, of businesses. Um, but we also like to teach open source software as well. The reason being that, um, number one, it's just as high quality as the proprietary software. Number two, you'll be able to use it when you leave, never mind whether you're um, currently employed in the organization with a license or not. 
and also the quality um, in terms of um, the how how they respond to recent trends in um, in the market. Open source software is is really um, high quality in that sense. Um, and you will have to learn some programming. So if you've come to this um, open day wondering about whether or not programming is, programming is for you, I would say that we start at an introductory level, but you need to at least be prepared to engage fully with programming. Um, you will more than likely end up using some form of programming in your summer project. So I'm not saying that you have to come here being an expert software designer or computer programmer, but you need to be able to to, to have the commitment to, to engage in learning some programming. And while you're here, all the software we have is available free, free to use. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the, the pathways. So I'm the course director of the GIS computing pathway. Um, and this pathway is for people who have some experience of GIS. Maybe they've worked in a role where GIS has been involved. Um, but they want to go a bit deeper. So typical students on the GIS computing pathway will have used um, software like ArcGIS or QGIS, um, and they'll be able to do um, cartography and basic spatial analysis, for example, using um, vector and raster data. But they want to learn a little bit more about those tools and techniques and the theory that underlies them and how they can be applied in more sophisticated ways. So getting under the bonnet of how GIS works. So we do a number of things on this course. So first of all, we go beyond desktop GIS. Um, to start with, we look at how you can use those desktop GIS to automate geoprocessing tasks. So using um, scripting, using programming languages to make your tasks easier and more scalable. Um, we look at the, the types of methods that you come, uh, commonly come across in GIS software. So for example, autocorrelation analysis and regression analysis, and we go into the theory of those, and we teach you um, how you can choose which methods are most appropriate to a particular data set. Um, we also go into ge geospatial software development. So you will learn how to create um, mobile applications that use web maps. Um, and then in the second part of the course, we look at um, spatial temporal data analysis. So very much um, training you to be geospatial data scientists, to be able to use the latest software and tools to, um, to be able to analyze large geospatial data sets. Um, there's a couple of images here. So the one in the center is an example of using machine learning algorithms to, um, to detect areas that are of high and low susceptibility to landslides in Italy. And the one at the bottom is using um, spatio-temporal clustering methods to detect patterns in crime. And these are all linked to real research projects that we've, um, we've carried out here at UCL. Um, we take the data directly from those projects and make them available to you so that you can experience what it's like to work on a, on a research project. And you will get into groups and you will apply the methods that you've learned to these real world, world data. Okay. So the next pathway is the building information modeling pathway. So building information modeling is very much uh, a growing research area. Um, with the new standards that are being brought in, um, the, the industry, the civil engineering industry is in desperate need of people with good skills in building information modeling. So what, if you haven't heard of building information modeling, um, it's the process of generating and managing digital representations of physical and functional characteristics and places. So you'll specialize in a number of things in this, in this pathway. So reality capture, how we can um, capture the geometry of environments. Um, we'll look at um, engineering surveying, um, how we can create 3D geometries. And as I said, this is very much um, a, a huge growth area at the moment. Um, in the next couple of years, the civil engineering industry is going to need a lot of people with BIM skills. So if you're coming into this um, open day, not necessarily knowing what BIM is about, and maybe you're looking at the uh, geospatial sciences degree in general, then it's worth having a little look into it after this and looking at BIM and deciding whether that's something you want to do. Um, there's some links here which we can share afterwards, which are to some projects that BIM students have done in the last couple of years. 
Um, okay. So one thing I will mention now, because it's possible that some of you have come here um, intending to study the hydrographic surveying pathway. We have a, a hydrographic surveying pathway, which will start in the year 2019, 2020. So that's fully accredited um, and it will be launching then. So if you are looking to do a hydrographic surveying course, then that will be available from there. But I won't talk too much about that now because that's not being offered this year. So one thing that's really a good selling point of our degree is our careers development. So we, we really want you to see how the software that you're learning is being used in industry. And we have a, a weekly seminar series in the first term where we invite industrial and research speakers to come along and talk about their work. Um, a lot of the time, these are graduates of the programs that we have here. So our current MSc and GIS or building information modeling and um, these, these, uh, these industrial and research speakers can really show you how what you're learning will be relevant to your future careers. And a lot of the time, if you have a word with them after the seminar, then they have some graduate positions opening up. So it's a really good way to, um, to get into the industry um, through our, our seminars. We also have um, various other careers oriented events. So we do things like um, mock interviews and CV reviews. Um, and again, being in the central London location, there's plenty of opportunity to, to join seminars, free seminars at institutions like the Royal Geographical Society and the Institute of Civil Engineers, which all offer student membership either for free or at discounted rates. So definitely being in London, you're at a, a world leading centre um, in terms of careers in this area. OK, so I've talked a little bit about what the course is about. Um, now I'm going to go into the structure, so what you'll be studying. Um, this depends on what route you take, but I'll try and give you an overview of each of the modules. So in general, there are four modules per term. Um, you do four, four modules in the first term, which is from September to December. Um, you do four modules after Christmas, um, and I'll talk about those in a second. In the first term, you will all take two foundational modules. Excuse me. Yeah, so the first module you'll do is geospatial science. And this um, module introduces the, the, the concepts of acquiring spatial data. So we're talking about the different modes of collecting spatial data from satellites to um, laser scanning um, to terrestrial um, modes. And we'll teach you about the, the issues in representing that data and in transforming it into um, something that can be mapped and analysed. And we'll talk about coordinate reference systems and the importance of these. The second module is geospatial programming. So this module is a full term module where you'll go from the basics of introductory programming through to developing your own basic geospatial software. So essentially you'll go from, from zero to being able to create structures that can represent spatial data. Um, this course will really, really prepare you for the second term modules and also for your future career in geospatial sciences. Because um, if you look at most job, job adverts in this, this field at the moment, they all require some kind of programming, whether it's Python programming, which is what we teach here, or Java, or some kind of web development frameworks. They all require some kind of technical skills. So if you've got programming skill, then it stands you in good stead in this industry. OK, so in the um, in the first term, so all students do those two modules and then the two module two pathways split between the GIS and computing and the BIM pathway. If you're not on a pathway, then you can choose freely between these modules permitting uh, timetabling permitting. So on the GIS and computing pathway, um, we have one module on spatial analysis and geocomputation. So the idea of this module is to give you the, the background in the theory of spatial data and how to represent spatial data and how to analyze spatial data and why you cannot use standard techniques that are made for non-spatial data on spatial data. And we'll do this using our statistical package. Um, so if you 
have a look after the session at our statistical package. If you're not familiar with it, we'll um, we'll do some scripting, and you'll you'll learn some tools and techniques to um, to enable you to to carry out spatial analysis in a more sophisticated way than you would in a standard desktop package. Um, the other module is spatial databases and data management. So this is how you um, store large geospatial data sets and how you interact with those data. Um, and we also cover um, more recent technologies like NoSQL databases here, um, which are becoming increasingly important for the industry. Um, on the BIM pathway, there are two modules in the first term. So engineering surveying is looking at the, um, the surveying skills that the modern um, BIM uh, graduate needs. So we're looking at um, knowledge of total stations and levels and GNSS kit, um, terrestrial laser scanning, um, going into more detail and coordinate reference systems. Um, and we'll also have some field work in this module. Um, data analysis is about get, giving you the, the mathematical and statistical skills that you need um, to have a successful career in this area. So um, looking at the sources of error in spatial data, how you quantify those and how you model those. So that's the first term. In the second term, um, again, you're studying four modules and you have a bit more of a choice here. Um, on this course page, you can see that there's the, the roots in brackets there. So um, some are BIM modules, some are GIS modules. So applied BIM, um, applied building information modeling. This is for the, the BIM students, but if you're a GIS student, you can also study this module. Um, there's a possibility that you come into the course not really thinking so much about BIM and then decide that it's something that's for you. Um, so the, the BIM module is about how to capture 3D data because a lot of um, what BIM is about is capturing 3D data about buildings and sites. Um, we'll build up more on the principles of surveying. Um, we'll look at data processing, feature extraction and how we manage BIM data. Um, and management of BIM data is something that is going to be increasingly needed by the, the industry in the coming years. Um, and building on that, we'll look at how you use software that you might have used before, so GIS software or perhaps CAD software, and how you integrate BIM with that, because the integration between BIM and GIS is something that's still an unsolved problem that is going to become increasingly important. So sensors and location um, is about the, the software Sorry, the, um, the tools that we need to um, collect data using things like mobile phones and inertial sensors and gyroscopes. Um, we'll look at how you um, determine context from uh, data collected from smartphones. And we'll also look at volunteer geographic information. So um, how citizens can go out and collect their own data and what the data quality issues are involved with that. So for example, with OpenStreetMap, um, how we can verify the data, the data quality when we have data collected by so many um, volunteers. Um, so those ones are split between BIM and GIS. And then we have two modules which are more GIS focused. So first of all, web and mobile apps and programming. Um, this is a course on software development. Um, so you will use um, JavaScript, HTML, um, and you'll also do some Android programming to develop web applications um, that use web maps. Um, and then finally, in spatial temporal analysis and data mining, you'll go beyond just analyzing spatial data and you'll look at how you can account for the spatial temporal characteristics of, of data. So that um, will also touch on machine learning techniques for dealing with spatial data. Um, and we, in that module, we use lots of real world examples. So for example, we use crime data from the Metropolitan Police. Um, we use transport data from Transport for London, road traffic data. We use lots of weather data. So by doing this module, you'll be able to, um, you'll have a good understanding of how to choose the appropriate tools um, to apply to um, a particular data set that you might come across in whatever role you end up in after the program. So there's a couple of technical details at the bottom of this slide. So if you're on the GIS pathway, you choose at least three or four of these, three of the four GIS modules. And then we do have a free choice of the fourth module. Um, if you can find another module from another department, for example, that you're interested in doing, then we, you can have that as an elective um, as long as we're okay with that. Um, the BIM 
modules are compulsory for BIM students. Again, there's a free choice with one more module. If you're not on a pathway, you can choose freely um, from these modules. Um, and again, you have the choice of one elective. Okay, so the third term from May to September, um, all the teaching is done before this, and then you do a summer project. So um, our current students, and Carlos is one of them here, are currently starting on this, um, this project. Um, many of our projects are in collaboration with industry partners. So in the past, we've had projects with um, Transport for London, with Arup, with um, various London councils, uh, with Metropolitan Police, London Fire Brigade. Um, I would say around about 50% of our students end up doing a, a project with an industrial partner. If that's your kind of thing, that's fine. If it's not, then we also have um, projects with a, with a supervisor within the department. Um, generally, they can be linked to the research projects that the academics are working on. So, um, for example, I do a lot of projects with, um, with cycling data. Um, we have other academics working with, um, with laser scanning and BIM. Um, and there's usually you can find something that you're interested in. Um, if, you've, if you're coming from a, a job where you work with data and perhaps you're being sponsored to come here, then it's absolutely fine for you to define, a, define your own project and source your own data and then do a dissertation based on that. Um, obviously, that will be a discussion that happens around the beginning of the year, but there's, there's no problem with that. Um, if you're interested in looking at some of the posters from the posters on the dissertation from um, previous years, you can find them at this link here. Um, and that's basically on our CEG webpage. Um, so have a look at, at those. Okay, so finally, uh, last couple of slides. In terms of entry requirements, um, we expect you to have a 2-1 degree. Um, we're not particularly um, choosy over the subject, but we ask that it is relevant to the degree. Um, we also accept work experience. So if you have two years of work experience, that can be um, accepted um, in place of a degree. And also, as with all degrees at UCL, you need to um, uh, take an English test if, if English is not your first language. Um, as I said, we don't particularly discriminate over the degree you do, but we will have some preparatory work for you to, to make sure that you, um, you're prepared for the start of term. So we'll set some, some basic programming exercises to look at and some, some mathematical um, courses to look at. They won't be particularly arduous. If you, um, if you think that you've already got the skills, there's no need to do them, but it's just to give you an idea of what we, um, we expect you to arrive at UCL with. Okay, and finally, the, uh, the big money question. Um, these are our fees for, for, for next year. Um, and it's worth noting that the, um, there are now tuition fee loans for, for um, UK-based <coughs> excuse me, UK based students. So you can have a look into that. OK, so there's a couple of links I'm going to finish on here. Um, we'll share the slides afterwards so you can have a look at those. Um, now, that's the end of the talk. And I am going to turn off the audio and the video now. Um, I want to thank you all for, for listening and for coming along. And I hope you all have um, some questions. And myself and um, Carlos and Jan will hopefully be along in a moment to answer any, any queries you might have. So feel free. We'll um, put up a transcript of the, um, of the questions on, on our webpage after, the, uh, after this session so you can read through and use them like an FAQ. OK, so thank you very much again. And I'm going to turn off the audio now um, and answer any questions you might have.